Sound speeds, and let's see if you've read into this situation before. You're on set, and you suddenly find yourself in a need to run a few hundred dollars, or maybe even a thousand dollars worth of cable someplace, because let's say Video Village insists on being in the room next door to set, and there's no room for the sound mixer, so the closest place he can be is five or six doors down. So you have to run your cable down the hall, through multiple doors, maybe out of a window, and around the corner, in order to finally get there. Or maybe there's sound playback going on, and the director has requested the playback operator be near set, but the sound mixer wants to be a couple of hundred feet away where it's peaceful and quiet to do his mix. Or maybe you're set up for voiceover and the soundproof room that you've acoustically treated is at the other side of the building. Regardless, you have to run your cable through multiple doors and or windows in order to get where you're going. Suddenly, last looks. Pictures up and executives have come from their offices to watch the magic unfold. Only your sound mixer brings up his faders and there's silence. How could this have happened? A door or window closed, severing your cable, and now that picture's up, you're in a panic because you have to rerun this cable. But you took proper precautions. You ran that cable through a door that was propped open with a wedge, and you jammed that wedge in there good. There's no reason in... Okay, well, things always happen on set. Maybe someone stole that wedge to use for some other purpose. Who knows, right? No point crying about it. You got to rerun the cable and then L and D it so that way production pays for it. But how can you make sure that your thousands of dollars worth of cables does not get severed indoors again? Well, I got a solution for you and it costs less than a dollar. Ready for this? Go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, wherever you need to go to get this, but get yourself some three quarter inch plastic tubing that you could buy by the foot. Take it and slit it straight down the center, making yourself a cavity where you can hide a cable. I get it. The cable is now protected inside the plastic. That's got to be it, right? Not if you're going to do it to my standards. Here's what I do. I add a second layer on top of it. The slit's on this side, and I'm going to put the slit facing the other side on the other cable. That way, there is no chance in the world the cable is going to escape this plastic. Two layers thick adds extra protection, and it's very unlikely that a door or window is going to sever this thing. You can even run this over a header, or if you're not in the film industry, it's a very thick, high-power cable, and it's not going to pick up any interference from it because that's a lot of insulation on it. Now, you don't just want to throw this thing in the door because someone will kick it and suddenly it's no longer protecting your cable anymore and it will get severed in the door yet again. Unless you tape it, you can run this thing parallel to the wall and leave a couple of inches out into the door frame. That way it acts like a stopper against the door and protects your cable. Now, I warn you, you do want to tape this down a few different times if you do it in this particular angle because that's not a natural angle that the door wants to have something jammed in. But if you turn it at a 30 degree angle, it's not going to be as clean of an appearance, but it is going to do a lot better with the direct impact from the door hitting it. This plastic tubing is not very expensive and it can save hundreds or even thousands of dollars worth of cables and save your frustration of having to rerun them in the heat of the moment or even having to L&D them. You can get away with six or eight inches of this plastic tubing, but I recommend going for a full foot and then of course doubling it up. That way you have maximum protection against your cables from getting severed. That's sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.